welcome to another episode of What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? I am Karen E. Osborne, your host. I'm the author of Suspense, Women's Fiction, Getting It Right, Tangled Lies, which is actually a murder mystery, and uh, Reckonings, which came out last year. And this year's book is Suspense Historical Fiction, True Grace, and it comes out in September. And I am so glad that you've decided to join us again. Today, I'm going to introduce you to Ms. Ellen Gillette and Emily Sharp, except <laughs> it's one person. Right? She is an amazing author. She's an illustrator. She's an editor. And um, and she also is a, a magazine writer. She's just all kinds of talent. And, uh, and she's going to explain to you about the two names. She's gonna tell you about her latest book and maybe we could get her to talk about a few others. And she's going to recommend some books for you to consider reading. So welcome, welcome, Ellen. Thank you for having me, Karen. Oh, I'm delighted. So let's start off with the two names. Okay. <laughs> All right. I had written a children's book, uh, She Bear in the Beautiful Garden, and I had written a nonfiction book by Ellen Gillette. But in my writer's group, uh, with it's called Use Your Words, we used to meet at Inner Truth Project in Port St. Lucie, and now we meet by Zoom once a month. But a few years ago, the homework assignment was to write a racy Halloween story. And when I wrote my story, everybody wanted to know what happened next. So every month I would add a chapter and by the end of a year, I was ready to be done with it. But I had 12 chapters, which was almost a book. And they encouraged me to find a publisher. So during the COVID lockdown, I actually did find a publisher, Blushing Books. And they, they loved the story, they accepted it, but they said it was a little short. And could I add a few elements? And they said a sample chapter from an editor. And I thought, <laughs> they want me to write about that? <laughs> I'm not even sure what that is. <laughs> but, uh, I, I talked with a friend of mine, my my most important writing mentor and he said you've invested a year into this book just do it the way they want it we agreed that maybe I would be more comfortable with a pen name I thought okay I'll just do this one book and I came up with the name Emily Sharp because well my mother thought that she was having twins when she was pregnant with me and she was going to name us Ellen and Emily and, you know, Gillette, Sharp. So <laughs> that's how I came up with Emily Sharp. And so Dear Editor was published and they wanted me to write a sequel. So I ended up writing a four book series under Emily Sharp, which I wasn't sure how my family would take all that, you know, mm -hmm. writing something racy, secular, R-rated kind of graphic, um, and I was sort of keeping it under wraps for a while, but I decided to come out as Emily Sharp, and I, I think we're all multi-layered, and it's okay if we have different aspects to it. I enjoy writing in a variety of genres, so racy romances is just one of them. <laughs> I love that story. And when you go to her website, which we'll tell you about where you can find her and everything at the end of our interview, you'll see the Emily and Ellen and uh, on her website. Uh, so she's she's her own twin. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's great. And so you're so prolific. You have not only those four books, but you have a host of other, and you have the children's book that you showed us. And then uh, this year, or just, well, last year, um, you had uh, the second book of a series that came out? 
Yes. After I wrote the four books for Blushing Books, they announced that they were going to start an imprint of inspirational romances. And I thought, well, that's really more in my wheelhouse. So I wrote a book for them and it was too inspirational. But my editor said um, that she knew someone with another publishing company, and why didn't I submit it there to Pennant Publications? And so I published a, a standalone romance for such a time, which is faith-based. It has scripture and prayer, and uh, it was just really a joy to write. And since then, I started a three-book series, unless it grows to more. Uh, Love in Yana Valley is about four sisters in North Carolina, and the sequel came out last year, Love in, or Joy in Yana Valley, and this year, Peace in Yana Valley will come out, so you kind of see where I'm going with that. <laughs> That's wonderful, though. So the the, the four um, that were under your pen name were racy without the spiritual parts, and yes. then these are still romance novels, but yes, from a, yes we've we've interviewed. I have interviewed, and we like I'm royal we or something. <laughs> I have interviewed on this show uh, several Christian romance writers. Um, it's, it's it's just wonderful, joyful, joyful books. Yeah, so the the um, Yana Valley series would be suitable for teenage girls, you know, when and up. Um, but they're very much family oriented. Yeah. Uh, and so, and then some of your other uh, writings, is that still mostly for younger people or have you done some, well, no, I guess the racy ones were for older. Yeah. yeah <laughs> no, the uh, She Bear in the Beautiful Garden is really the only children's book, although mm. adults enjoy it. It's an allegory based on the fall of man and the Garden of Eden story from the perspective of the world's first mother bear. And uh, that was the first book that I wrote and I illustrated that and originally self-published with Les Maison Publishing and Vero. And that's kind of how I got into illustrating because the owner there, Janet Searsant, recommended me to illustrate for another author. And so I've illustrated mm -hmm. for his series of children's books and sort of branched off from there. And I also started editing through uh, Les Ma Les Maison also. That's wonderful. So, illust so do you have any illustrations you could show us? Yeah. Well, the illustrations in She Bear are a little more uh, involved, but uh, this is Fred Berry's book about uh, going to the hospital. So, um, they're just, you know, illustrations about that. But he has a whole series called The Adventures of Carmelo, where Carmelo learns to swim and he goes to the doctor and he goes to the hospital and he gets his eyes checked. And so it's been my pleasure to illustrate for him. And also for a 10 year old author. Oh, my. He wrote a, a book for a school project, Gabrielle Yan. And her grandmother decided to have it published and asked me if I would illustrate it. So that was really fun oh, to support a young author like that. Yes. Did he like your illustrations? Well, Gabriella is, is a girl. But, oh, it's a girl. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Yes, she did. She, she did. did. That's awesome. That is awesome. So, um, how, so when somebody asks you, you know, oh, you're a writer. What kind of writer are you? Given how eclectic you are, what what do you say to people? Well, I I say everything I've written has a special connection with my life. Um, I wrote She Bear in the Beautiful Garden about uh, the loss, really, of a child. Uh, the she bear learns that she and her cub share a special destiny, and it's nothing she would have asked for. Uh, there's an element of suffering. And uh, my 16 year old son died uh, in 2000. And so at that time, I was writing out of that mother's heart. I also wrote a, a book about forgiveness within the church called Bad Sheep When God's People Let You Down. 
uh, with a real personal basis in that uh, because of a particular incident in my teenage years uh, where I was really betrayed by a church leader. And so every book has elements of my life and my past, even, even the racy romances, people who are reading them say, you know, I could hear your voice in there, although it's completely out of my personal experience in some cases. <laughs> so, like I said, we're, we're complex. I don't think we're just a Christian writer or just a romance writer or just a children's book writer. We are people that God has gifted with the different experiences and different flavors. And I think all of that comes out. Maybe one day I'll settle on one genre, but right now I'm just enjoying learning about different genres. And especially when I edit for other people, that has come into play because I have to get inside another writer's head right. and express things the way their heart wants to express it, but maybe they lack some of the, the writing skills, but they've got a great story. And it's just a joy to help them bring that to readers. That's wonderful. Yeah, I think um, somebody asked me why I don't write a series. And I said, because I write what I, what I want, what, you know, what's in my head, what's in my heart. And I, they said, but we really want to know what happens next with this book. <laughs> And so I say, well, what do you think happened? And I just let them tell me what they think. And I say, I think that's a, I think that sounds about right. You know, and I just I move on because we as writers, we have to write what we're moved. Right. What we're moved to write. Yes, I agree with that. 100%. So uh, tell us a little bit about your reading life. Recently, your, your writing life is so eclectic. Is your reading life eclectic? Well, I recently finished a, a Carl Hyacin book, Double Whammy. I, I don't know if you're a fan of Carl Hyacin, but he's a Florida writer who is secular and hilarious and really offbeat. And I enjoy his books very much. I'm currently reading a, a new author. I've never read Lewis. Oh, King. yes. But I was I watched the Three Pines series on Prime Video, and a friend of mine said, "Oh yes, she's a best-selling author," and and so I got a hold of a better man, and really am enjoying it. And I was struck by the fact that she does some things in her writing that we have sometimes been taught were wrong. Mm. She changes. Um, voice you know it's not just from one perspective sometimes she uses fragments we're not supposed to use fragments we're supposed to use you know, being a teacher you know I'm I'm clued into complete sentences but she is an effective writer and a brilliant writer and so that just teaches us that maybe we don't need to stay in the little boxes that we've always heard we needed to stay in Yes, exactly. You know, right. Emily Sharp would agree with that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> indeed. Indeed. Do you do you use beta readers? I do. I was so grateful for my writers group. All of the Emily Sharp books are dedicated in one way or the, another to the use your words writers group because they gave me such great feedback. And a few ladies. Uh, after the first one, I had about six people look at the first manuscript, and then there's been two or three who have hung out there with me, and every time I have a manuscript ready, they give me excellent feedback. So I, I think that's very important because we miss things. You know, our brains are reading what we think we've written, and it's always good to get <laughs> <Yeah>. feedback. <laughs> I'm learning to edit myself more ferociously, but we always miss things. And it's so good to know, um, you know, how people react to your characters and and if this makes sense and holds together. And I've been writing, I have two amazing women. I have quite a few beta readers, but two of them have been over 15 years mm. and they're in Australia. Wow. Yeah. And, and so we've been writing 
you know, online. And I had the pleasure uh, five years ago to actually meet them. Oh, wow. But, yeah, we went to, uh, my husband and I went uh, back to Australia. We'd been uh, several times before, but we went and I got to meet them. And it was just, it was wonderful. And, we, and just today I got an email from one of them is reading my latest novel and she sent me back a bunch of notes. And, <laughs> and we really need our writing community, don't we? We do, we do. Yeah, our writing and reading community. Wonderful. So how can people find out more about you if they want to find you online, if they want to um, invite you to a book yes. club? Uh, we love I that. I would love people. that. <laughs> love that. And um, last February, so about a year ago, I think it was a year ago, um, I did a signing and reading at Use Your Word or at uh, Inner Truth Project in Port St. Lucie, which was a lot of fun, able to support the good work that they do there. And uh, I'll be at Cool Beans Coffee Shop in Fort Pierce. Uh, I believe it's February 13th as part of a, a bigger group, but I would love the opportunity to come and, and talk to groups. Um, Ellenandemily.com is my website, which needs some work. I, I got something up there and and I have a young man in Texas who's helping me maybe improve my website. Um, there's an Ellen Gillette slash Emily Sharp Facebook page. And I'm on Twitter, Ellen Gillette 22. So I would welcome anyone reaching out to me. I would love to have a conversation if they have a question about editing or illustrating or just want to talk. <laughs> That sounds wonderful. Uh, uh, Ellen and I just found out that we live about 20 minutes from each other. Who knew? So I look forward to coming to one of your events and meeting you in person. And I hope you all will follow Ellen and that you will follow me um, on uh, Twitter, on Instagram, YouTube. I hope you'll look for us and be in touch and let us know. Let us know and that buy you met books. us. <laughs> buy books and read books. <laughs> buy books and read books and review books. Yes. And review please. books. That's that another gift you difference. can give to authors that, that you admire. So we thank you so much for being with us. And we hope that you will join us again next Tuesday for the next episode of What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? Bye, everybody. Bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>